how to start a food truck in Alabama. In this video of Fruit Food Truck Freaks, we are gonna cover just that question. We're gonna give you a rundown of the permits and licenses that you would need to operate a successful food truck in Alabama. And if you've also asked yourself, Alabama food truck commissary requirements, did you know that there is commissary requirements for a food truck? We're definitely gonna cover that as well. And we're gonna get to that right now. All right, so welcome back to Food Truck Freaks. We are YouTube's premier food truck entrepreneur channel, bringing you tons of resources and information to help you get your food truck up and running. And we're gonna have videos on our channel for every single state, and including tips on how to market a food truck, how to build a food truck, and everything else in between. So in this particular video, we're gonna cover the state of Alabama and let you know exactly how to start a food truck in Alabama. I'm gonna cover a handful, as I mentioned in the introduction. We're gonna go through some permits and licenses. Now, to make it even more helpful, uh, we always try to help make sure our videos are truly, truly a helpful bit of information. Down below this video, in the description section, you will find a link directly to the state of Alabama's website to give you specific and even more information on what you'll need to do to get a food truck up and running. So, welcome to my channel. If this is your first video, definitely hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you can catch up on all the food truck videos that we will be uploading. Uh, my name is Damian Roberti. My wife and I, Sylvia and I, are food entrepreneurs for over uh, 13 years now. We actually have operated Italian bakeries. We also run e-commerce businesses. And I've been in the food industry for over 30 plus years. So I bring quite a bit of experience and know-how and knowledge. And plus, I'm a huge foodie, actually. We also have a podcast dedicated to food trucks, too. Check out that link down below. Uh, our Food Truck Freaks podcast is on 11 platforms. So you can definitely catch us anywhere. All right. So let's dive into it. The first one is going to be your EIN. Now, if you're, you're new to food trucks, you're not familiar with this, employer identification number is a number that actually is issued by the IRS. This is dedicated solely for the tax purposes of collecting your, your tax revenue information at the end of the year. Um, not sales tax. This is actually for your own personal tax. And of course, if you operate a business, a small business, like a food truck, you will have to pay taxes on your income, obviously. So you can apply for an EIN directly on the IRS website. Super simple. Next one up, obtain a business license. So. Now, something unique and very different about running a food truck business, even if it's in Alabama or any other state, is the fact that you have to have a business license in each city or county traditionally, how it works. And what that means is, is if you're in one county in Alabama or a city, you cross over and go into another city or county, you actually need to have a business license because you're a mobile food business. So you're actually not like a brick and mortar restaurant where you're stationary and you're collecting sales tax because you are in one location specifically in that city or county. Now you're, you're actually uh, uh, operating a business. It's on wheels, of course, but you're operating a business and you're going into another city or county. That's hence the reason why you need to have a business license in the other city or county. That is definitely something you need to check in on because every state is relatively dissimilar to that as far as the regulations are concerned. Next one up, a valid driver's license. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Damien, that's kind of a no-brainer. Of course you have a driver's license to believe it or not, whoever is driving your vehicle, you need to make sure all of them, if you've got employees or one or two additional people assisting you, and you happen to be the food truck owner, but you're not technically driving, and someone was driving it without a license, and of course not a valid license, that food truck business that is yours, that you've worked so hard for, and that is your bread and butter, and it's bringing money in through the front door, that can get fined, or even in big, more, more cases, impounded, or some other legal uh, ramifications. Make sure that anyone that's driving your food truck has a valid driver's license. It's something that a lot of people just think, eh, what's the big deal? I'm just gonna have one of my friends drive it around, I'm gonna do the cooking. You need to take this seriously, because if you don't, you could lose your food truck or even the permits or licenses to operate your food truck, okay? Next one up is a seller permit. So food truck owners in certain cities and counties actually will need to apply for a seller's license, as it's known, or seller's permit. This allows you to buy food and other types of ingredients at wholesale prices without having to pay tax twice. Something that a lot of new food entrepreneurs are unaware of, and not only just food trucks, believe it or not, is when, when you create a finalized food product, if it's a dish that you're serving, a packaged food product like a snack, or baked good, whatever it is, you have to bring together ingredients, correct? Now, you're gonna source those ingredients from vendors. And as you source those v v um, products and ingredients from vendors, you don't need to pay tax on the purchase of them because when you sell the item, that is when you collect sales tax for the transaction. Does that make sense? 
Okay, so you're gonna make sure that you follow up with that and you get that because you need to show that permit to these wholesalers or vendors or let them know, <clears throat> even if you go to Costco, if you go to these big box wholesale stores, let them know that it's tax exempt. They will create a little card at the store and let you purchase products without paying tax on it. Okay. Next up for food truck business, how to start a food truck business in Alabama, we need a food handler's permit. Most states we require this within cities and counties for you to have a food handler's permit. Okay, and this is actually kind of a course that you'll take and your employees. Normally what will happen is you're going to also have to have your employees take this test and it's gonna make sure they understand how to serve food, prepare food, store it, sanitize things that are being used for the food process and everything else in between. So a food handler's permit is definitely something you need to check with the city specifically and find out if they require that. Almost everyone does. It's if you go to a restaurant, uh, ServeSafe, I believe it's ServeSafe, yeah. ServeSafe is a, a company that handles all of the um, classes and the validations of those types of, of, of permits. And each person within that actual restaurant as a manager or, or supervisor has to be on the premises and has to show that they've taken ServeSafe uh, certification. It's very similar to food trucks. It's just because you're on wheels doesn't really kind of make you any different than a, a restaurant. You're, you're pretty much the same, okay? So check into that as well. Next up is, of course, the health department. The health department within the city or county that you're in will also need to also inspect the um, either commissary or the food truck that you have. Now, in Alabama, you do have to have a commissary for your specific food truck, and I'll go into that shortly, a little bit of what's required for that as well. But the health department plays a big role in what you need to have inspected on the truck <clears throat> and, of course, the commissary itself. Uh, be sure that you follow to a T what the health department expects as far as cleanliness, uh, storage of food, uh, preparation of the food, uh, cleanliness of the equipment, small wares such as cooking pots and pans and dishes and the things of that sort, small things that it takes to create your product. Because the health department comes into your food truck and they find violations, they are normally going to tell you you can continue to operate, but you need to address these because I'm going to come back in about a week or so and reinspect. And if it happens again, normally what happens is the health department will actually shut you down. Uh, will they take away your license and permits? I believe it's, uh, it depends on how the city and county itself, the health department goes with a one, two, three strike type of situation. Some of them do that and they're going to give you on the third time you're done. Okay. So double check with your health department specifically on how frequent uh, of those inspections are and then what happens if they have to come back. <coughs> Next up, fire certificate. Yes, you're operating a restaurant on wheels. If you have a generator that is utilizing either diesel, propane, or you have a regular traditional gas, you have a, a lot of equipment on there as well. There's a lot of potential fire hazards that go along with food truck businesses. So the local food, um, so local fire department will have to check out your food truck and to make sure that everything is operating properly and is secured. Uh, lines from either propane tanks into the unit, uh, the equipment that's being used, deep fryers, that they're wired, hardwired and everything is electrically okay, good to go. You don't want to have something break out on your truck because guess what? Not only is it a safety hazard, but that's your business, right? Your food truck is your lifeline. It's a business that you've created. It's like having a restaurant and then having um, it wired incorrectly and your deep fryer is not working and then you have a fire in it. I mean, that's your livelihood. So you want to make sure everything is good to go and thumbs up on that, okay? Now, we're going to dive into specifically uh, Alabama is required as far as a commissary Unlike other states, not every state requires this, believe it or not, but the majority of them do, they're going to require you to have some type of, uh, of a commissary kitchen dedicated solely to your truck. All right, so in, in the uh, state of Alabama, they actually have four categories. And this is a really unique um, system that they have set up, and I kind of like it. But there's four different categories depending on the type of mobile food business. Keep in mind, like food carts, food trailers, food trucks, and so on, they have a variety of different requirements, permits, and licenses, and of course, how and what they expect from the unit itself as far as preparing, holding, and making food. So I'm gonna go through a couple of the categories, and like I said, I'm gonna leave all of that extra in-depth information in that link down below. It'll definitely, it'll tell you the Alabama state. It'll take you right over to our blog, and you've got all that information there, okay? Category one, so these are units that can serve only pre-packaged food and drinks, so there's no preparation or assemble assembly of the food itself or even beverages on the actual unit. So this is a category one. So this would be something like if you had a food cart or concession stand, but it was a mobile unit and you've got like drinks and sodas and bottled water, 
things that are prepackaged so you're not preparing or cooking anything on the unit. Category two, these units may actually dispense unpackaged foods and even ice and may heat, hold, or serve food fully cooked. So these would actually be items that are already done. If it's like, let's say a pre-made hot dog or hamburgers that are just warming up, these are things that are gonna be allowed, of course, on that type of a, of a system. Um, and, I, and I'm sorry, actually, no. As far as the animal origins, you, ha you cannot serve those. So they may not be used for raw food animals. So that would mean that raw meat, raw proteins, chicken breast, you know, ground beef for burgers, tacos of that sort. On this particular category too, you have to have a pre-made food. So you're basically heat and serve type of a concept, okay? So check this out. There's actually two more we're gonna have down, like I said, the link down below. I'll keep the video short and sweet. Wanted to go through this and give you some ideas of the permits and licenses. Check out the remaining list. It is fantastic, it's very informative. And if you're looking to figure out how to start a food truck in Alabama, uh, definitely check out that resource because it's a huge help, okay? So if the video is helpful as always, please do give us a big thumbs up. We're gonna wrap up this video and we appreciate you guys watching. And definitely tell any of your friends, if any of anybody that you know in your family who's looking to start a food truck, share our content. We appreciate that greatly. If the video was helpful, if you have any questions, let us know in the comment section. We appreciate that. We also have a couple other channels for food entrepreneurs. Uh, Marketing Food Online is the name of the other channel that has almost 100,000 subscribers. Um, and we've got a thousand videos on there. So check out that channel as well. And I'll see you guys on our next video.